the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. Open up. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh, every knee will bow before him who can stop the lord stop the Lord who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord Sing it over the who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord come on sing it one more time who can stop the Lord Almighty Stop the Lord. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. the opportunity to gather together in homes and to pray. I got to go to multiple home gatherings, and I think what blessed me the most was hearing the heart of our Father coming out of everyone's mouths as we open them to pray, to seek our God together, to humble ourselves in His presence to lift up the needs of our community, to lift up the needs of our church, to lift up the needs of each other. Wednesday night when we came into this place to pray and to worship, you looked around and you saw generations seeking our Father. And one thing that has stood out to me is it didn't have to be complicated. It was simple. It was God's people coming together, proclaiming his word, standing on his promises, and seeking after his heart. 
thank you for being a part of that. The word of God says, do not despise small beginnings for the Lord loves to see the work begin. And as we seek him, there is a unity of spirit that falls on every single one of us. Because when you hear the heart of your father come from, coming from somebody else, you know that we are all in this together. Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love and he rejoices over you with singing. Father, I thank you for the work that you have begun at Riverdale Church. I thank you that you are faithful to complete everything that you start. I thank you that your spirit is being poured out on your sons and daughters, that they will prophesy, they will have dreams, and we will not be the same. And we will be a beacon in this city of your light, your hope. You are in our midst. Your word says where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And when we are in your presence, we are changed. As we worship you this morning, Father, change us. Jesus, you prayed before you left. Make them one with one another, Father, as you and I are one. Give us a heart like yours, Lord. You are the promise keeper. You are the miracle worker. And you are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. And we lift up our voices to praise you in your house this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. He's never stopped. You never Come stop, on, you him. never stop He's working. Never stopped working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Come on, church, sing it out. Light in 
all of it, every portion of our heart, every portion of our life, you are worthy of all of it. I have witnessed your faithfulness. Remind us to share with those around us who are hurting, who are lost of what we've witnessed being the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. You have placed within each of us a unique story to declare the glory of you. I can't tell somebody else's story, but I can tell mine. And every hurt, every trial, Everything is for your glory, Father, to be a witness of your faithfulness. Your promises never fail. I want to pray over every heart in this place that you have placed a promise in. Would you remind them of that? Would you stir it up in their heart? We give you praise and glory and honor in this place, for you are worthy. And in the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Try it again. There we go. It helps if you turn the switch on, right? <laughs> You know, the sound man has more power than anybody in this building, right? Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Joe. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and I'm so glad to see all of your shining faces, even on this cold morning. My goodness, what a cold morning. That'll get your attention. Walk out the door. Hey, today is a very important day for us here at Riverdale because tonight we launch Alpha and Financial Peace very important classes for us here at Riverdale Church. Now, you might be thinking, man, I wanted to be a part of that. You still can. There is still time to register. There is a table out back, so after service, you can stop by, sign up, because we'd love to have you be a part of both of these wonderful programs. So you can sign up there. You can sign up online. It helps us so that we have a head count because we serve a wonderful home-cooked meal tonight. There is child care for kids up to grade five. So if you thought about coming, today is the day to sign up to do that. Now, you probably, as you drove in, saw that big fluorescent sign out in the front yard. Yet yeah, it's, it's official. We've opened up our comedy night to the public, and people are responding. We are almost halfway full, but we want to see this sanctuary completely full. It's going to be an amazing night. If you're dating, if you're engaged, or if you're married, please come on January 20th, 630 we, uh, we want to, oh my goodness, it's going to be a hilarious night. Anybody that was here last year, you remember Joey Aiello and Kyle Yamada? They were amazing. They're coming back. So it's going to be a wonderful night. 
Bring friends. Invite people to come. See, the beauty of this is you don't have to be ashamed about bringing somebody to something that you're going to be embarrassed about. It's all clean comedy. It's going to be a wonderful night. We'll have refreshments afterwards, but you got to sign up for that. And finally, you're probably wondering, why am I holding a package of undies in my hand? Well, January 28th is Undie Sunday. We do it every year. We want to collect underwear for kids, boys and girls. Uh, sizes 2 to 6T. So you can bring these in until uh, Undie Sunday, which is January 28th. We're going to resupply Samuel's Closet at the Anoka Community Mission with Undie. So please help us with that. That's all I have for you this morning. Could you please welcome Pastor Clarence as he comes with the word this morning. This is only a test. <laughs> oh boy. One thing about those sound guys, they try hard to make my voice sound good. It's not your fault. It's just the way I am. I was born this way and had a relapse. So um, we're gonna have a great time on Thursday I don't know, it's not called Skype, but it's something where someone that's somewhere else, we can see them here and talk to them. So we're gonna try that on uh, Thursday night. Our search committee is going to look for a prospective pastor and we're gonna get to know them a little bit. And then our board at 7.30 is going to meet and then our staff at 1.30 the next day. So um, this, We're going to have a great week, and uh, i like to thank the Lord for the, all the ways that he's helped us in this process. I believe we have a wonderful opportunity I, w I, don't even, I don't even let us talk to the average or the top 90 and up. We're at the 100% and up, so that's what we're doing. So we're excited. This morning, I want to talk to us about Chasing the way, chasing away the birds of prey, it matters. And standing on the promises that God has put in your heart. Let's pray. Good to be in your house with your people. Thank you, Lord, that we could sense your presence. That when we walked into this place, we can sense your presence as we sang. And I'm believing, Lord, that your presence will need to be here as we open up the word of God. May the word become alive to us. May we, may we realize that Satan is out to destroy. God is out to restore and build up. We ask you to do that as we share together. In steal something from you. I have. And, and, I, and I captured it back as I could, the best I could. Uh, several years ago, when we were living in Bloomington, <coughs> Vicki and I, on a conference that we were at, we were rested, we were, garage door opened her up and our car isn't there, our second car. So. Uh, we said simultaneously, where is the car? So um, we thought, oh, maybe Kirby and Des needed it. They were going two different ways, so they just uh, came and got it. But if they would have done that, they would have told normal that anything like that was happening, but we didn't uh, think much about it. We walked into the house and uh, went down a little hallway that uh, was going by the guest room. And we noticed that the beds were 
we thought, well, Des would never do that. She always makes the bed just perfect. And so uh, then we noticed the, the, the uh, mattress was halfway off the bed and uh, the drawers were dumped out. And so um, we thought something's going on that we weren't, weren't expecting. We uh, went through the house, found out that there were all the dresser doors were dumped upside down. And um, we, uh, we thought, what happened? We were in shock. We walked around and came to the front door and the front door um, trim was laying on the floor. And so it, it you know, only took about three minutes. But um, when I noticed that all those things were happening, we realized that we had been enjoying a time away, but um, someone had broken into our house, they kicked down the door, emptied out our drawers, and um, they tried to, they picked up whatever they could. I had a, in my office, I had clear Coke bottle that could you could put money in so we had about four or five hundred dollars in that and uh, we found out that they helped themselves to that and yes the car was really gone well we made it easy for them we had keys by the back door and we had key key sign on it in case they couldn't find it and they were able to find themselves they took off with our car and um and we noticed that they did not steal the jewelry we didn't have. <laughs> we don't have. We don't have enough jewelry for anyone to bother with it. And so um, we immediately uh, made a couple of calls. We called the police and uh, talked to them a while. They gave us some instructions. They did some, uh, you know, dusting for, for fingerprints. I think they did that just to humor us because we knew they weren't going to find any second. We called a friend who had come and helped nail the door shut for the night. And uh, he thought of, let's reprogram your, your car, um, your do garage door opener, so when they come back, the one they have won't work. And so um, it, was a, it was an amazing night. Understand Matthew 24, 43 a little better. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at the time of night that the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not. The police gave us some good information uh, that, that would help us in the future, but they, they said um, uh, places where people, or the, the people drive by neighborhoods and they look where people aren't home, where the same light is on every night or, the, or, or no light is on, uh, mail, where the mail has not been picked up or the newspapers in the driveway. This, he said, uh, we need to make sure your driveway's plowed. Well, we, or, or there's no alarm system. I think that's an important uh, thing for us to remember in all of our life. We should have our, all of our alarms set. And uh, he said, if, you ha if all that stuff is going on, it's like an open invitation uh, you're putting out in the yard. Come on in, take anything you want. We're not home right now. Now we thought that we had done everything well. We had, uh, we had not given them permission. We didn't want them to come. We weren't looking for them, but they came anyway. Uh, Satan likes to do that in our walk with the Lord. Uh, this we should do. We always canceled our mail and hired someone to mow the lawn, plow out the, the uh, snow. We also had someone drive up to the drive to the garage, and so there were. We didn't we didn't realize that um, when people are really going to steal something, they they notice if the car drove into the garage or just up to the garage. So. Um, couple of guys walked around the house a few times and found out that we weren't there and so um, Satan operates like that. Do you know that Satan's trying to ruin you? He's trying to steal the promises God has given you. He's trying to take away your all kinds of stuff in your life and um, 
he would like to sneak in when you're when you and I aren't expecting him to come. We have our guard down. He is constantly roaming the earth looking for easy prey. The Bible says in 1 Peter, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. We forget sometimes that Satan is actually prowling around alive, looking for how he can started. Unlike this thief that uh, broke into our house and uh, Satan isn't happy with just a car or a little bit of money, he would like to rob you of everything. You know, Satan likes to steal your dreams. To steal our strength. He'd like to steal our ability to minister. I know so many people right now that they're on pause in ministry. They used to be a positive force in the church. They used to be pastoring, but, God, but somehow Satan put them in neutral. And they aren't affecting anybody right now because that's uh, what Satan does. He has a way of breaking up our marriages, taking our kids and ruining our lives. And he'd like to keep you from every good thing that God has in store for you. But I have good news. God is giving us ways to break through and not to uh, be be uh, destroyed by him. First Kings chapter 20, we find a fascinating story of an evil king. His name was Benadab. He saw that the northern kingdom of Israel was easy picking, and it was, uh, and it was, Israel was a nation in rebellion and uh, ruled by an ungodly king. You're always easy picking. Uh, there are always people in a room this size that are in some sort of strong or mild rebellion. If you're in rebellion, you're always easy pickings. Scripture records that Benadab besieged the nation and sent the king this message. Your silver and your gold are mine. Your wives and your wasn't enough, so he goes on to say the messenger came again and said, Thus saith Benadab, though I have sent you, saying, You, you, uh, you shall deliver to me your silver and your gold, your wives and your children. I want even more. I will send my servants to you tomorrow, about this time, and they will search your house, the house of your servants, and, the, and all the desires of your eyes, and they shall lay hands upon it and take it away. In other words, Benedict was saying, I want everything, everything good that you have. And um, that's kind of the way Satan continually works to try to destroy God's people. And we need to have our guard up. In other words, Benedict was saying, everything good that you have, I'm taking. And he would have. If God hadn't... Uh, Detoured, if God hadn't intervened for the nation on behalf of the Israel, uh, Israel had an ungodly king, but he was smart enough to listen to the prophet, and God changed everything. Satan would like to reach in and take your favorite things of every one of our lives. Um, some of the most heartbreaking uh, words in Scripture were written hundreds of years of a different outcome. When Israel rebelled and uh, to the point where God couldn't help them anymore, Lamentations chapter 1, verse 10, Jeremiah writes, The enemy reached out to take all your favorite things. She watched as pagans barged into your sanctuary. For whom you posted, you post that orders keep out this assembly is off limits. Satan would like to reach in and take your faith in your life that means something to you. I've been, uh, I've seen it happen so many times. He's ruined homes. He's ruined families. He's ruined lives. But the good news is he doesn't have to. Um, by the actions of the Jewish people, they had not, they had a, <coughs> 
not only unlocked the door, but invited, invited the enemy in. Uh, Matthew Henry said, says, uh, sin brings men If God may not rule us, the enemy will. Uh, some, sometimes in life, we keep stepping a little farther and a little farther away from the commitment that we made, and things start happening in our mind that lead us away from what God has called us to do. The police told us when, when things come, they're looking for targeted opportunities, and in fact, they often enter through unlocked doors, uh, if that's not enough, I mean, some lot locked the, the uh, door open like they did at our place, and then they sneak away to see if anyone's if alarm goes off, and uh, if it doesn't, then they go in. So in your life, I want to challenge you: lock a few doors in your spiritual life. Lock a few doors. Keep watch over your heart and your life. On what set boundaries that will protect your treasured relationships. Um, Satan has a way of trying to get us off guard. When our when our home was broken into, the officers uh, in charge said that the best um, detour is to keep uh, have an alarm system to keep. That is all that's needed, just the sign, and they won't even bother it. Um, as a general rule, th uh, thieves uh, tend to pick houses that are they're, they're vulnerable without any uh, alarm system. Make sure your alarm system is working, and then use it for the glory of God in your own life. God has pre-wired. Actually, I hate to bring this up, but common sense is probably one of the best. But God has done something also for believers. The, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit will speak to you when you start drifting away from where God wants you to be. And um, every believer has access to the voice. Uh, it happens in a service like this. And the Holy Spirit begins to talk to you about things that are out of place in your life. He's not only, uh, he doesn't only spell it out by the word of God, uh, he, but he tries to make us realize that the enemy of our soul is, in, uh, is trying to operate to destroy us from what God has purposed us to do. We know Satan is a liar, deceiver. Uh, he really doesn't have any new tricks. He uses the old ones and they keep working over and over again. Satan is like a thief to break in, like a, like a thief that breaks into the physical home. He likes to come and, uh, and approach the hearts that we, you and I are, are living in. And he's not afraid to give the, give the front door a little cook, a kick. And if, if it's unlocked, he comes in. If it isn't, he'll knock it down. If there's no resistance, no alarm, he can move right in and help himself to whatever he wants to. Um, if he can't get in right away, um, if he, he, he'll try to get a little foothold in somehow. Do you know that bitterness opens the door to Satan? Do you know that unforgiveness? Uh, forgive, or you can choose to not forgive. Anger will let um, Satan in in a, in a way that some people have anger in their life and they only have it from time to time. But God wants to deliver us from those kinds of things. Uh, an angry Cain was warned, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at your door. Do you know what's right? Are you doing it? And uh, all of my life, as I try to serve the Lord, me away. 
try to keep me from being what God wants me to be. Scripture instructs us to watch certain areas of our life so that Satan will not outsmart us, for, he, for we are uh, familiar with his uh, evil ways of how he tries to come into our life. And he can't get, uh, if he can't get in another way, pocketing some of the things in your life. Uh, if he can't rob you of everything, he'll try to take away your life into neutral so you're not affecting uh, the world or your family in any way. He'd like to steal every promise that God has given you. The book of uh, Genesis records the uh, calling of Abraham <clears throat> and the incredible promises that God gave to him. Genesis 15, Abraham uh, asked the Lord for a confirmation of his promises, and um, Abraham was told about the sac what to, to make a sacrifice. Does anyone have any water that you didn't start yet? I, I'm kind of... Um, And I'm, I'm running out of fluid here. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't want it there. Yeah. I have cotton mouth. How many of you ever had cotton? Maybe this will work better. It's interesting to note when Abraham built his altar, here's what he was saying. God, I want, you to, I want you to confirm the promises that you gave me when you sent me here. Abraham built a And then it says, the birds of prey came down on the carcass, but Abraham drove them away. There's a secret. When Satan tries to steal all the good things God gives you, we have to drive away the things uh, that are trying to destroy us. Um, anytime God gives us a promise uh, of a full blessing, the birds of prey will start circling, desiring to steal. Uh, what promise has and uh, in the form of confusion? Sometimes we have a promise going and we get confused about it. We start to doubt. We get discouraged. We begin to feel fear. But the, the bigger the promise, I guarantee you this, the bigger the promise, the more vultures that will come and try and steal it from you. However, <clears throat> there are some things we, we can do. We don't have to. Uh, we too can move into action and do what Abraham did to the birds of prey when they came. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, you know how the Lord what are the thought? Something you'd never do. And uh, when uh, Matthew Henry said, when vain thoughts like these fowls come down upon our sacrifice, we must drive them away and not suffer them to lodge within us. Martin Luther uh, put it like this. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from making a nest. In the best of Christians start letting little thoughts creep in and they don't kick them out. Uh, they dwell on a negative thought that shouldn't be in their mind. And we can be busy doing God's work thinking we have. We were at a conference. We came home. Why would something bad happen to us? Well, David had been on a great mission. When he came back and returned home, he found something far more devastating than a few bucks or a car. Here's what David found. Three days later, David and his men arrived home, and they found that the Amalekites had raided the city, burned it, 
David had a devastating experience that most of us have never had, or maybe we've had it in a smaller measure. As David and his men looked, they wept until they could weep no more. Uh, some of you have had experiences where you've been robbed or your children have strayed or different things have happened and you're hopeful that God will help you. Well, David found out that he, he gained strength from the Lord and God wants to pour strength into your life. Weakest hour. Um, it wasn't the end of David's message, of, of the story, because David decided to take action. Then he said to um, Abathar, the so he brought it. So he brought it, and David said to said to ask the Lord, "Shall I chase them? Will I catch them?" And the Lord told him, "Yes, go after them. You'll recover everything that was taken from you." If you ever had a thief break in and steal something, one of the first things you should do is look up your insurance policy. Our insurance policy was happened to be good. They let us rent a car at their expense. I encourage you when Satan tries to steal something from you that you check your assurance policy. There's some things that God has promised us. In other words, know what God promised you and hang on to that. Uh, remember, God is in the restoration business. Uh, he, his compensation package promises to restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have taken. You don't always know what to do. Uh, I realize that death is certain. Sometimes our marriages are, are, are dissolved and destroyed for some reason or another. But there are some things that after. Uh, that is our children, that they'll all serve the Lord. That our grandchildren will come into the fold and know Jesus. Uh, God wants them all in. And between services. I've been able to talk, get to meet more and more people. I'm finding out that Satan has stolen a lot of our kids. The prodigals are going to come home. As a minister, it was to believe in the prodigal that they're going to come home. And uh, God wants them all in. I used these verses last year, but last week, but I want to use them again. Uh, God said to his wayward children, and I think it applies to those today. Here's what God said. I will round up all your scattered children. Put them. Send them back. Return my sons from distant lands. I want them back. Every last one of them who bears my name. Every woman, every man, every woman, every child whom I have created for my glory, yes, personally formed and um, made each one of them. There are times when we need to claim the promise. Maybe it's your brother, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's your, uh, your um, cousins or family members. The hounds of heaven are better at bringing people back than all of the God's going to restore families in 2024. Stand with me as the worship team comes. Anything that you've been, any promise you've been given by the Lord and somehow it's been stolen, uh, I, would, I wish this morning that you would start claiming it back. I wish you would start saying, I'm going to bring everything that God gave me back to the altar the altar is a good place to find a, a God to talk to us. Um, altar is a good place to chase away the prey. If there's some temptations that have come into your life that you're not that you don't want, chase chase away the prey, uh, like like uh, Abraham did. 
Uh, this is a time to stand on the promises. It's a good place. The altar is a good place to do what Abraham did, chase away the prey and confirm the promises that God has given to you. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to file an assurance claim this morning and uh, remind yourself of the things that God promised you. God is in the restoration business. He wants to restore everything uh, that's out of order in your life. The altars are open. We have special prayer leaders that I'm so thankful for at the altar this morning. Thanks for setting up the teams. Let's find uh, a place either where you're at or at the altar to, to claim back the things that Satan is trying to take away and destroy. Let's sing together. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life within. So I pour out my praise and gain you worthy. God, you're worthy of all of it. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell. So I pour out my praise and gain you worthy. God, you're worthy of all of it. Oh, you're worthy. <clears throat> As I was praying this week, it seemed like the Lord was telling me so many people are enjoying victory and so many people um, are experiencing wonderful things but there are those that the promises of God have been stolen from their heart and um, I just want to remind you that everything that God has promised you he wants to give you and everything that God has promised you Satan would like to steal from you but here's what it says from Job 2.25 I will receive the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, my great army, uh, which was sent among you. You shall eat in, in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. I believe the things that God has promised you are for you, and uh, let's claim them in our place of worship this morning. Let's sing it again. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life within, so I pour out my praise and gain. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I'll live to tell. So I pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy. As we start this new year, let's take the promises of the Lord with us and let's chase away everything that doesn't belong that's trying to destroy us. Lord, thank you for your promises are true. They're yea and amen. May we take them into this new year and touch our world in a meaningful way in Jesus' name. Amen. Take the Lord with you.